Paper's pins have no points tell the story of a relationship between Miss Julia Cray and Fanny Wilmot. The two of them have a relationship born out of teaching, however it evolves into a romantically driven relationship filled with love and pining. Slater's Pins Has No Points is a perfect example of modernism and the changing ideals of the time. Not only is it told in a strict consciousness format, it shows the reflection of the time, straying from the established mold in order to create agency over oneself. This can be seen through the two themes that occur again and again, happiness and independence. Through the story, happiness and independence seem to appear in almost every paragraph. Fanny wonders if Julie is happy. She is, after all, an anomaly of the time. An unmarried upper-class woman who lounges around and spends most of her time with Fanny. However, Fanny does realize that Julia must be happy since she has so much freedom, saying, quote, Julia has not endangered her habits. They remained safe, and her habits would have suffered if she had married. Julia lives a life outside of men and remains happy. Instead of marrying, she chooses to spend her time teaching piano and living leisurely. This is important because it shows the clear push away from the established idea of how women had to live their lives and conform to the mold of a perfect ideal woman. Julia Cray lives a life dictated by her own wants and ideas. From the fact that she'll give lessons when she wants or just to, to decide to invite someone to tea. The third to last, last paragraph shows this, saying that Fanny saw quietly descending the curving steps onto the lawn, then saw her pour out tea beneath the cedar, the cedar tree, as well as the defining sentence of the piece, obstinately adhering, whatever people might say, and choosing her pleasures for herself. She saw Julia. She has clearly been on, Julia is a person who has clearly been on her own for quite some time. Since she discusses Kensington, the nicest part of London, finally, even though it was 15 or 20 years ago that she lived there. This is when she established her life early on and was firm in her decision into remain independent and happy by herself. She has had plenty of men come into her life that she could have married and created a new life with. She had attracted them first, and then her brother's friends from Oxford or Cambridge. However, she pushes that aside in order to have a life of her own, saying, men have only one use, to protect us, later following it up by saying it was the only use of men. Fanny, though, quickly replies, I don't want protection. Fanny understands this. She gets up at one point in the early mornings to walk all the way from Kensington to the river. She was so thankful that she had not sacrificed her right to go and look at things when they are at their best. She longs for the freedom of independence and the happiness associated with it. These ideas of independence and happiness associated with it to a clear break from the traditional way of thinking and live and life up to this point, the concept of agency. Agency is something that had been just out of reach for many women and other disenfranchised people. However, with each passing year, more and more agency was claimed by women and other people. This push for agency and control over one's destiny was shaped by the push for rights, as well as the modernist movement ideals of freeing oneself and creating a new, person, a new person. Before this, women were expected to marry and start their own families. There was little independence in the lives of women. However, having characters push past this shows the new spirit of the time. The independence of these two women also helped to show the freeing from constraints and identity, specifically their love for one another that goes further than friendly. It is romantic love, a clear break from the assumed ideas of the time.